Hello. So today I'm just gonna I have to make a new cover. I want to use this F hook. And I can't find the one that <laughs> I lose these things all the time. That's why I buy these very inexpensive ones and then just make my own handles. When you've got carpal tunnel from years of crafting. Well, I also cashiered for decades, but it's hard to keep going with a small needle. I've gotten where I have to use bigger needles. When I knit, I almost always use circular needles. I don't know why, but I they're easier for me to keep a hold of, and I use wood. Wood or bamboo, but I prefer the wood. Um, I, I'm able to grip them better. But what I did is with this G, I just took some of this, and it was only like half the thing. I had made a one to just slide over this. Yeah, you can't do that. I just tried to stick it in, and it broke because the hole wasn't quite big enough. It's going to take me forever to get this thing worked loose. I sat here for probably 30 minutes the other night softening up the orange. Now this stuff seems to last forever. I bought a sample pack, I bet 10 years ago. It's got to be at least 10 years ago I bought that. And uh, I'm still using it. So as you can see, this is a sm just a small, like half a cube of this color. I would recommend that you use a different color for each size hook that you're going to do it on simply because it makes it easier to know at a glance. So now I know this orange handle is my G and the blue one will be my F. And of course, if you want, you can always run out and just buy the needles with handles on them. But when I went to the store needing to buy a replacement, when I couldn't find my G, which of course now I found three of them afterwards, they wanted like $10. We're on a fixed budget. We're senior citizens. So as often as I lose things or my cats carry things off, I would rather find an alt less expensive alternative and I've already got this. Plus it's kind of nice to do it yourself. Now I tap the end so that technically it can stand up. And these little, I don't know if you can see them very well, like groove lines would were just me doing this so that I could grip it better. So the way I hold it, I know some people hold their needles like this. It wasn't the way I learned. I learned this way. I've been crocheting for how old? 50, almost 52 years. <laughs> That's the way I crochet. It works for me. I never understood this part myself because I can't, I use my fingers to roll my, my in, pinky in, I don't know what that one's called, but the third and fourth finger I usually use to roll as I'm grabbing the yarn. I'm rolling it to pull it through. So that's that's the hold I use. But I need something on my hook. I do it only up to the curve so that you can still see the size. You work this forever until it's soft enough. And then I roll it in a tube and I use a skewer. I have a whole pack of my keep back here for craft and I use them for everything. But this gives me a nice fine point. If I can get past the glare here. Gives me a point. There. <laughs> and I can just sit there and push it down in slowly. Spinning it until it goes. Then I put the needle in slowly. I don't want to enlarge it too much. And I very gently roll it around the top and I try to make sure that it's kind of close and I tap the bottom so it's a little flatter because I'm going to stand it up in my oven. And as much as they say, oh, you need to have a separate oven, you know what? It didn't even leave a smile in mine. 
I do it. I lost the instructions a long time ago, but I do it at 200 degrees for like 30 minutes. I set my oven to automatically shut off, which of course it still beeps like crazy. Yeah, somebody has to go and hit the button to make the beeping stop, but I just let it cool in there and it's fine. It, it's done. So 200 minutes, 200 degrees Fahrenheit, 30 minutes. It's really, it looks a lot thicker than it is because it's hollowed in the middle and it's got an aluminum needle stuck down the center and it's standing up so the heat can get all the sides. I have noticed over the years whenever I do this, if you lay the stuff down, you end up with little shiny spots everywhere that it touches on. I always set it on aluminum foil on the dull side of the the aluminum foil. I don't know why I just do because <laughs> I have an old pan that I use just for craziness, but I still put foil on it. But that's what I'm going to do today. And we're going to pause this because you do not want to sit here and watch me for the next 30 minutes work this stuff. But I'll bring you back when I'm finishing up so you can see it before it goes in the oven. Okay. All I had to do was I got it soft and now I'm going to roll this out. And when I get it to the size that I want... I'll simply break a piece off. I'm having to replace my audio. For some reason, it didn't record me talking, which might be a saving grace. And I've never done this before, so please bear with me. So we'll just twist it, kind of break off a little piece. I don't use any special tools. Not anymore. Got rid of them. And I'm go I want that to kind of stand up in my oven. It just it bakes more evenly, I think. So I'm going to keep tapping it on my glass plate. This is a media plate. Well, as you can tell down the corner, it's tonic. Um, I like it. It works out really well for things. I'm, I'm going to... I want to cover it only up barely over the curve out section. I, I call it the thumb hold. Here I'm just talking about how I move my needle. I twirl it with my two, the last two fingers on my hand. You know, I snag it and then twirl it. It's the way I learned to crochet. Probably very different from the way you crochet. I'm self-taught. Just about everything self-taught. So, you know, and this was eons before internet, so. I watched my grandmother crocheting thread and a tiny little hook all through my childhood. So, I'm trying to get the little grooves, slight grooves, for the grip in it. And this one is fighting me. My, and I noticed that my stick seemed a little cockeyed, so I am repositioning it in there. I want it as, in there as straight as possible. And there, it the skewer has a very fine point, and it'll peek through the end and just touch my finger, and I, oops, look, far enough. And the trick is to very slowly, now see, that skewer just happens to be almost the same size as the F-hook handle, so it worked out real well. It slid in there pretty good. 
we, it's going you want it to bake and stay on I you don't want it sliding off while you're crocheting and you you grab and you're pulling on some slubbed yarn and the hook is loose in the handle it's gonna pull right out so I'm going to t I want it to fit snug and now the orange one seemed to shrink a little bit in the oven as it was cooking I don't know if that's normal it just to me it seemed like it did and now I'm tapping that end to snug it up around the thumb hole spot I want that smooth and angled because I don't want it rubbing my fingers it'll just drive me nuts if I keep rubbing the edge of my finger on uh, something sticking up I want it as flat as possible smoothed out and holding on I want to be able to see the name of the hook on there and that's in your thumb hold spot and wow I got a lot of gray hair <laughs> well I'm old so yeah we get a lot of gray hair as we get older surprisingly it, I don't ha I still have a lot of brown I mean, I'm 61 I'll be 62 this year and I don't dye my hair I my sisters were going gray in their teens <laughs> I don't know why I haven't anyhow back to this so when I'm happy with how it's fitting because I want to make sure I can see that F symbol real well I'm going to just try and work it a little I'm trying to get the finger holes in it's just fighting me awful about it I don't know why the orange worked no problem I used my fingers to roll the holes the little divots in it but this one just didn't want to cooperate it's like you know everybody's a diva you turn on that camera even your crafts are going to become divas and in a moment I'll give it up come on in a moment give it up <laughs> maybe I should have gone through and just cut out chunks of this film first there's a lot of talking and I'd already talked once I'm trying something else that didn't work I've got this ink pen and I'm going to show it to you I get them at Walmart I mean I you could probably get them anywhere and it's even tube shape all the way down easy to grip it is just ink not gel but it works for so many things and I'm using that to kind of roll the little divot in because I couldn't get it to start it just wouldn't start it is very cold today our predicted low for tonight is minus three that's the real temp that's not the chill factor <laughs> we got a an arctic blast moving through and I'm in southeast Michigan so I don't know what I'm po oh I'm pointing at the camera telling you where the the microphone is and that I don't want to be too loud and here it wasn't recording the sound anyway so now I'm trying to figure out how to do it first time ever I'm using headphones that I block my husband's politics out with That's a lot of hand movements. Now I'm going to smooth out those divots. I'm going to have to pause here. My timer. Sorry about that. <laughs> so by rolling it back and forth with my finger in that groove it smooths it out a little more so it'll fit to my hands easily and it's just a little grip hold that's all I wanted was a little bit of a grip to hold it in my hand as I'm crocheting I like to mindlessly crochet but I don't want it to have edges I'm a I guess it's a century it's century sensory thing that you know like I'll sit and pick at a hangnail 
until I rip my whole nail off. <laughs> I can't, if I feel it, it's got to go away. So, literally, I have emery boards all over my house. So, I can just file off the edge. And I'm not vain. The only reason I've got finger and fake fingernails is because my real ones have split from old age. And they snag my work. And I, do I, that drives me nuts, too. Everything drives me nuts. I'm just a nutty old lady. I'm putting my base back on, bouncing it, wanting to make sure that it's going to stand up. And I'll tell you right now, when I put it in the oven, it kept falling over. Every time I shut the door, I'd hear it go tink on the edge of the pan. I'd have to open it up, stand it back up. It's driving me nuts. I finally got it to stay upright. And it's not like I'm trying to sell this thing. I'm not, it didn't have to be beautiful. But I wanted it to bake more evenly. Laying down, I feel like it doesn't get a chance to bake as evenly. I would love to get another. When I used to work with the clay all the time, I did have an old toaster oven. I picked it up thrift store. And I sold it this last summer. We had a yard sale. And neighbor boy is all grown up. He's 20. And he's moving out into his first apartment. And he bought my toaster oven. I had a, a coffee pot from that I had bought to use in receiving. He bought all that stuff for his new apartment he was moving into. <laughs> it was cute. <laughs> and then I threw a bunch of other stuff. I said, if you got a coffee pot, you need a coffee mug. So here, take this and this and this and this. I don't know what it's like to have your child leave the nest. Mine are in their 30s and live at home. But to be honest, I really like them here. <laughs> I'm, I'm the worst, I know. Anyhow, bye-bye.